this uh, table here, along with this equation. It's an exponential equation. You'll be given something like this, and it'll say, find the equation, or which of these five choices represents this data set. So what you'll need to do, essentially, is use this information to find A and B. How to do that? Well, it's not too bad, Mitchell. What we'll do first is just plug some points in. Uh, let's plug the easiest one I can think of, this one in. So I would write 5 equals A times B to the 0. Just plugging in 5 for Y and 0 for X. What's B to the 0? Well, no, that's something that you have to know. Janelle's B to the 0 is 1. So in other words, A is 5. Now I can rewrite my equation like this. But I still don't have it done. We've got to figure out what B is. So let's try a different point. Let's plug in this one next. So 10 equals 5 times B to the 1. Well, what's B to the 1? Yeah, that's right. It's just the same thing as B. What to do next? Right, divide both sides by 5, and I get b is equal to 10 over 5. 10 over 5 simplifies to b, that's right, 2. So to sum it up, I'm going to have my equation written like this, f of x equals 5 times 2 to the x, and I look for that answer choice, and then I'm done. Take a moment and think through what each of these steps were. Think through what each of these steps were. That's right. The first step was I had to plug in a point. I chose the easiest point. Good. What's the next one? That's right. Well, luckily it was b to the 0. That let me just find a out immediately. Yep, the next one is to choose another point. We chose this point because it's the next easiest one to plug in. That gave us 2. And then we just rewrote the equation. Good. So take this down before you've done anything else. Nope. Take it down. Write it down. Write this whole table down. And what else should you write? That's right. Write the formula down that we've been working with. The formula, again, is f of x equals something times something. That's right. a times b to the x. Write that down. Good. So in this case, we need to find the formula, and then we'll use the formula to help us find k, because there's an unknown variable. So what we're going to do is the same thing we did before, which was, that's right, plug in these numbers, 5 equals a times b to the 0. b to the 0 is, that's right, 1, a is 5. We're going to plug this back into the formula, so f of x equals 5 times b to the x. Choose this, num this point again, and we get f of x equals, well, 10 equals 5 times b to the 1. b to the 1 is b. So 10 equals 5. Divide both sides by 5. I get 2 is equal to b. So here we go. I write my formula down f of x equals 5 times 2 to the x. How do I find k? That's the next step. So this was actually the exact same formula, the exact same work, which is why I went through a little faster. And now we've got to find k. k is the y value for x equal to 3. So we'll plug in 3. f of 3 equals 5 times 2 to the 3. 2 to the 3 is 2 times 2 times 2, so 4 times 2, so 8. 5 times 8, 40. So k equals 40. Repeat the steps, repeat the new step. That's right, the new step was we had to plug the x value in, the 3, in order to get the k. Copy this new table down. It's for something called h of x. We've got new information, new x values, new y values, new formula, h of x. 
That's right. It's still the same idea, though. A times b to the x. Good. Got it copied? For sure? You got all of this written down. Really? All right. If you're ready, then, Gerson, let's keep going. So we've got this formula down. The first thing that I'm going to do is... Oh, wait. You guys have practiced this twice now. Have, a look. have you done yours? And so here's a reminder. Watching this video is the same thing as going to class. If you just sit there and don't pay attention, or if you just sit there and watch the video, it's the same difference. What you need to make sure you're doing is actually pausing the video and following along. Doing the best you can, and when needed, then asking out and reaching out for help and so forth. So, if you've actually attempted this problem, I'll uncover it. Otherwise, your computer is about to break down and will never work again. Also, your phone. If your phone's working, it will stop. I'm just kidding. I really can't do that. Here it is. So I found A, I found B, and then I found the equation. There was a zero. I chose that one because that allowed me to find A right away. I chose this one because it's the next easiest point for me to work with. And then I found that the function was 9 times 1 third to the x power. We're going to have one more example for you to work with. So take this problem down now. Yes, it's still the same formula. It always will be. We're still finding k. So find k. Take this down. When you're ready, unpress pause. Hey, look, it's this formula again. Well, that's because I forgot to find k. Let's find k. In this example, k was when x was a negative 2. So that means I'll plug a negative 2 into my function. Negative 2 into my function. And that will tell me what k is. There it is. You can see it now. There's the negative 2. This is the same thing as saying 9 times, well, what is 1 third to the negative 2? Well, 1 third to a negative power is like saying 3 to a positive power. x to the negative a equals 1 over x to the a. So that's a rule. That's our exponent rule. So if it's 1 over x to the negative a, that's the same thing saying x to the a. So both of those work. In this case, I'm using that version of it. 1 over a fraction to a negative exponent is the same thing as that number to the positive exponent. All right, so what's 3 squared? 9, that's right. So 9 times 9, 81. Now we'll go back to that other. Good. So you have this information taken down, and 